first, Sky High Science. It's the ultimate act of grace and agility. But under the right conditions, flying can become overwhelming, even for the most experienced pilots. Things are relatively easy, and then very quickly can change to become highly stressful and highly dangerous. But new research could change all that by studying the most important airborne instrument of all, the brain. This is going to probably revolutionize the way we fly in terms of providing a new technology to measure flight performance. It all begins on the ground at the National Research Council's Flight Research Laboratory in Ottawa. Aside from the aircraft, one of the most important technologies here is the EEG, the electroencephalography unit, a system of electrodes that monitor electrical activity in the brain. We have 128 channels to measure across the scalp at all different areas to look at during different flight tasks what's really happening to brain activity while the pilot flies. Doctors use EEG to diagnose things like epilepsy or sleep disorders and it is used in basic brain research but this is the first time it's been applied to flight. Some wave patterns are associated with motor movement for instance and some wave patterns are associated more with mental tasks, such as, you know, doing a, uh, a mental calculation to, to, to calculate your flight approach. But for the brain research to begin, no, you need a pilot. Uh, I got my eyes closed at the moment because uh, we have some uh, um, shampoo and salt water on there to improve the conductivity. Once the EEG is in place, a test will determine if the electrodes are working. The test that you see on the screen um, shows a green for a good contact between the electrode and the skin and a red if the uh, electrical contact uh, is not acceptable. Now it's on to the simulator, a helicopter with high-definition television screens. Ready. Everybody ready? All right, the first maneuver of FF1 simulated roll capture. What we're doing in the aircraft is to have them do very basic flight motor tasks where they're doing relevant tasks to what they'd be doing when they really fly in a simulated way in the aircraft where they're simulating the movement and then when they're really doing a flight maneuver. On my mark, you will add your home phone number while moving your hand and feet. We're also having them do mental tasks up in the air. So we have them do arithmetic uh, uh, calculations where they're doing mathematical calculations and uh, giving us numbers. So we have them doing real calculations. Eyes open. Yep. Okay, so 100 knots. 2,300 feet, uh, ready when you are. For the helicopter, we're doing very specific helicopter maneuvers where they're flying hovers, where they're flying very specialized uh, flight test maneuvers for flight control systems, and we're looking at their brain activity in a, what I would call an aggressive flight maneuver to a very gentle flight maneuver. He did this great, outstanding. What researchers notice is that flying stimulates the entire brain. There's no special part of it that's associated with flight. Also, most flying is pretty boring. In fact, if you fly at night, it's, it's so boring that staying awake is actually pretty hard. So I would say that a, a highly trained pilot doing essentially cruise flight, this is practically falling asleep. But as experienced pilots know, flight conditions can change rapidly from relatively safe to potentially deadly. It can get so bad that the pilot is, is no longer able to perform all necessary tasks and, and uh, the brain has a way to then shed all the unnecessary uh, elements and the pilot is trained to focus on only the, the uh, primary task which is flying the airplane. And it's in the air where this brain research is expected to pay off. Scientists say it will help detect a flight problem before the pilot is even aware of it by sensing warning signals in the brain. A lot of times it's just a matter of a few seconds, so if we have a few more seconds to give the pilot mitigating cues on the display or even on the flight controls to allow him or her to regain control a little quicker, uh, things can be saved, whereas if you don't have these extra few seconds, it, it might be too late to help the pilot. The advance warning could also save lives by warning pilots they're running out of oxygen. And what can happen as a result of lack of oxygen is you can quickly become cognitively disoriented and it's contributed to certain aircraft incidents. So the other thrust of our work is to get a physiological system where we can see the pilot health in order to make sure that they're aware that the pilot may be in distress. 
Although it's barely begun, scientists believe brain research like this will lead to all kinds of new technologies that will make flying simpler and more intuitive, especially in situations where pilots get overwhelmed by information. It won't make pilots any smarter, but it might just make flying safer. those people who are convinced robots are on the verge of taking over the world, then our next story is sure to fuel your paranoia, especially if you happen to be a professional drummer. Gil Weinberg is a trained pianist who loves to play jazz. I like the improvisation aspect of uh, jazz. He also loves technology. I'm also and 